Hey everyone, today I'd like to talk to you about something that is taking the augmented reality industry by storm and promises to make AR go mainstream. No, I'm not going to talk about Apple's AR kit. Enter the AR cloud. The concept is not new, but it finally seems attainable with a few companies demonstrating for the first time how this concept can actually work. So today I'll cover what is the AR cloud, why we need it, who can build it, and when to expect it. 2017 was an amazing year. AR went mainstream. That is only from a developer point of view. Until recently, AR apps were hard to develop, hard to distribute, and had no real demand. But all that changed in 2017. With the introduction of some fantastic AR SDKs by Apple, Google, Facebook, Amazon, and Snapchat, now there are some top-shelf SDKs to easily build AR applications. And there's no more struggle to find a market of devices that can run these apps. By year-end, we're expecting 1.4 billion devices to be optimized for running these AR apps. By now, everyone has heard about augmented reality. They're not sure what it's good for, but curiosity has reached an all-time high. And yet, AR-based apps are still struggling to break through the novelty phase. Why is that? Because AirKit and AirCore-based apps are like surfing the web with no friends. So if not AirKit and AirCore, what will drive mass adoption of AR? Here are some of the top 20 internet properties. What do they all have in common? Sharing, communication, and collaboration. To hit the mainstream, AR experiences will need to persist in the real world across space, time, and devices. What does that mean? Persistence means I can create an AR experience in a physical space today and come back tomorrow and interact with it. And another user can experience and collaborate with it on a different device. And of course, other people can do the same in other places. To enable these kind of experiences, you need the AR cloud. Some people call it a real-time spatial map of the world. Others think of it as when the world itself becomes a screen, a shared spatial screen. The IoT camp likes to call it the digital twin or the world as a soft copy. Maybe one day we'll simply call it the real cloud. So how important is it? Let's hype it a little. At some point in the future, the AR cloud will be the single most important software infrastructure in computing. Why does every AR insider think so? Because it could become the operating system of the next era of spatial computing. Everything will run off of it. But what is it really good for? At its heart, it's for sharing and collaborating in AR experiences with many users. And that is because the AR sharing we see today is not it. Sharing an image of a face filter or even a video with special AR effects, word lenses on YouTube, no matter how cool or disturbing it may be, is not like sharing the actual AR experience itself. But why is sharing your AR experiences really so important? It took me 10 years in augmented reality to finally realize its true meaning. It's a new way to organize the world's information. The mission statement that defined the web era and made Google the most powerful company on the internet was to organize the world's information and make it accessible. But 20 years later, in the spatial computing era, we need information in the now. Ask any millennial and they'll say, I need info about what's in front of me right now, about this restaurant, that person, or this object. And I'm sick of searching it the old fashioned way. The AR cloud allows to organize information visually at its origin, or in Latin, in situ. And once that happens, you can simply glance and learn how to use of any object, or you can see the history of any place. 
or learn the background of any person. And the information is found right there on the thing itself, at its origin, in situ, without the need to search. And the beauty is that every person that interacts with these things or places adds their own knowledge to it. So AR's promise could be rephrased as to accumulate humanity's knowledge and make it accessible, not a click away, but at a glance. There are many open questions that organize this information. Who should edit it? How to make it easily accessible? As well as many ethical and legal questions. But the biggest UX challenge is how do we transition from a world where all the knowledge is captured in text to a world where everything is captured visually in 3D and in situ? In any case, at the heart of it will be the AR cloud. And whoever controls the AR cloud could control how all information is organized and accessed. The battle for the AR cloud is on and it will be fierce. But you may have heard or seen some AR cloud services before, right? So what's really new? You're probably thinking about these AR services in the cloud. Are these the AR cloud? Well, not quite. A GPS-based service is not an AR cloud because GPS is not accurate enough. I mean, where in this picture is the restaurant I'm looking for? And an image recognition cloud service is not an AR cloud either. These services could be great precursors to the AR cloud, but they can't do what the cloud needs to do. The AR cloud needs to understand the actual scene, the geometry of the physical environment, the objects in it. Without it, it's tricky to blend virtual content with the real world in a believable way. So how do you make an air cloud? What are the ingredients? The air cloud requires, first, a scalable and shareable point cloud. Two, an instant ubiquitous localizer. And three, that enables real-time multi-user interaction. Let's break it down. A shareable, persistent point cloud. Point clouds are not new. In fact, they've been around since the 1800s. And there are many proven ways to create point clouds from LiDAR, drones, depth and stereo cameras, etc. But for the air cloud, point clouds need to be persistent, always accessible and aligned with real world coordinates. It should understand the geometry and shapes of the real world and be high resolution to support occlusion and collision. And it has to be infinitely scalable. It has to support large spaces and then connect many such large spaces to even larger clusters. And in addition, it must allow many users to contribute and continue to refresh and build over time while using apps built on top of it. Microsoft Photosynth demonstrated a crowdsourced point cloud from Flickr photos back in 2010. For the Air cloud, it needs to happen in real time, fed by regular users using their mobile devices for 3D scanning. And by the way, a traditional 3D map won't do because a user needs to localize against the map, which brings us to the second requirement for the air cloud, a localizer and tracker. This is not new either, but for the air cloud, it has to work anywhere you go, from any angle on any device. The reason it has to work on multiple devices is to allow interaction by many users in real time. Interaction in AR is of course not new, but the AR cloud will support many users interacting in real time. Here's an example with more action and outdoors. And by the way, you want to be able to enable interaction on the device, but also by remote users in what you could call God mode. It's all like an MMO. Many users interact with persistent content and with each other in real time. Except here, it's mapped to the real world and it's a whole new game. So who can build it? Let's start with the giants. Microsoft, Google, Apple are the top contenders. Microsoft has built a great tracking system on the HoloLens that maintains content overlays or holograms in several locations around the space. And that's amazing. But 
it only works on a single device, cannot be shared with others, plus it currently only runs on HoloLens. Google has probably the best head start in building the point cloud with street view cars, the visual positioning service, Tango devices and 3D scanning capabilities. However, it can only run on a very small number of devices and it's not persistent. There's no multi-user support out of the box. What about Apple? AirKit is probably the best thing that happened to AR, but it can only detect surfaces so far, not full shapes. And of course, it works only on iOS and only on a single device. It cannot be shared across devices. But Apple do get an extra half star for bringing it to the largest install base yet. Bottom line, the giants are behind. It will take a long time before they offer a mature AR cloud service. My bet is on the upstarts. It's going to take a crazy startup to put together the building blocks and prove the concept. And here are some of the startups that are already demonstrating different approaches to tackling this hard problem. Why it's going to be a startup? Because only a startup has the audacity to try something that hard. And startups will always have the advantage of offering cross-platform support, which is essential to the AR cloud. Also, let's not forget the wild cards. You can still emerge and try to take a leadership position, though most of these companies are far behind. Perhaps it will take a consortium, an open source style project to bring this massive endeavor together. So when could that all happen? Well, it's not here yet, but for the first time in history, the ingredients are in place. Initial demos are real, and it seems not that far off. Let's look at how long these technologies took to mature. Here's a brief history of the point cloud and slam. The first point cloud was invented in the 1800s, along with photography. 20 years ago, we saw the first real-time visual slam. And as far as 10 years ago, it was already demonstrated on a smartphone. The first AR device, the Tango, was announced five years ago. And we saw SLAM run on a depth sensor accessory back in 2013. That same year, Flyby demonstrated its AR kit-like capabilities on a smartphone. And then it took four more years until this tech was finally released as a formal product by Apple and Google. With this trajectory, my forecast is that a mature AR cloud service could take as much as three or more years to become available. But the leaders are being defined right now. And as soon as 2018, we'll see early systems appear in the market. And by the way, this timeline could change based on some of these factors. A future depth camera equipped iPhone could be a turbocharger for the creation of rich, accurate point clouds. Standards and an open source style project, perhaps a DNS registry-like system, could open it up for many developers and accelerate the process as well. And smart glasses, once you have always on AR, could help accelerate the scanning of the world. Of course, we'll have to be diligent in how we address valid concerns around privacy and security. We want to make sure to avoid any friction in the market caused by these concerns. But you guys, the startups, the creators, corporations, the investors, you will be the key to make it happen. And you can't sit on the fence. You have to jump in now or the cloud will leave you behind. So come partner with us in building the AR cloud. My name is Orin Barr and I want to thank you for being with us today. Come talk to us.